Hello. Um, in the next series of uh, showing the amazing aspects of the cinematics is to understand the camera ring rail, which allows us to have a moving, transportable camera shot. Once dragged into the scene, we can then grab this little point here, and that will extend out to any length we want. So we could go. You know, if we wanted to do a long shot like that. Anywhere you want to make it. Now, if you, for example, wanted to do a circle or a square, you grab your Alt button, and on any of the arrows, you turn. On this arrow, Alt, there. On this arrow, Alt. And then we have, well, we can then move that out to there. You can get it very, very precise. And we could even... Look at doing a little angle there, like that. And you could get as absolutely accurate as you wanted to. And have the camera go in any direction, any sort of linking up those two. And of course, it's not just vertical. If we, we can lift that up, twist it round. It's getting a bit funny now. But you know, you could have the, the camera go up walls. Uh, you can hit that button and then go back that way. Have cam any effect you want. Now I'm just going to um, control Z and go back a few stages till it's there. Make sure control Z. Uh, like that one there. Okay, it's better. Grabbing there, I can then just put that up to there. So, there's your circle. Now, if I was to go to the start of here, grab a cinema camera actor, link the two, so grab your cinema camera actor, drag it up to the camera rig rail, and then we can go down to the two default buttons, bang, and bang, and that camera now has locked itself to the actual wheel, and we can set it up to a, a height or distance that suits our camera shot. Highlighting the camera rig rail, you can see that it now, the camera will now move along that whole rig rail. So if we wanted to do an inward shot, we'd have the camera pointing, you know, that way or that way, so that we could then um, move the shot along. The camera won't actually move to follow the line. So as we're going out, just. to this position. As we are moving our position, the camera is going to stay exactly the way that you put it. You'd have to move the camera there and animate it to have it go. But another way around to do that, now if we grabbed, for example, this dancer, and we were to put her in the middle, we want to video her in a circle camera shot. We would then grab our camera, go down to enable locket looking. Hit that, it will ask, who do you want to look at? So, her name is Coco Dancer. That's found her. Now, we could then go up to our relative offset, change that to a height that suits your camera angle better. With that done, we're pretty well set up. Now, I'll just get rid of that so that we can start with that again. You'd go up to Window, up to Cinematics, take Recorder. That makes that appear, and then we would hit Source, Camera Cuts. From there, we can grab those two, Track, Add to Sequencer, Add Current Selection, and we have selected those two actors, which is the camera rig rail and the cinema camera actor, and they are now attached to here. With camera rig rail um, highlighted, Hit the current position on bail. You can also hit the actor hidden in game, and that allows you to make the track invisible so that you can sort of see it when you're working a little bit better. With the current position on bail, uh, on, on rail, sorry. So making sure that the current is zero, because it only has that movement there. So we'll put zero, and then we're going to hit current position. This also go down to your transform. 
and hitting a key button as well. With those two hit, we're going to move our arm all the way. Sorry, I nearly forgot. We dictate how long we want our movie to go. Let's just put uh, a short one, a thousand frames. Then we grab our red line and drag it out to the length of a thousand frames. We grab our actual video and drag it out to the same length. Going back to our camera rig rail position. So then we go over to a, here and we move it all along to the one at the end and we hit key on the current rail position. Go down to your transform, which is just the changing of the cinema camera actor position as well, and we mark that. Now lo locked in is our whole circle of movement. And if you wanted to change the angles, um, it's but I, I'm not too bad with that. If I wanted to go and say make that 90, you know, it'll go a little bit up. Keep working with it, moving back. But this is, oh, I just want to keep it simple. So we're coming around to there. And that's our shot. Now, again, we can go down to our manual focus. Make sure that's, I usually like to go down to blur. Which is around 200. And then come back into clarity, hopefully. With that set, that's our shot. Remi uh, remembering that if I grabbed this single figure here and I hit track, add to sequencer, add Thomas, then I could go down and his transform button. Now we move to there. And this is how you animate anything else. So if I hit transform, now we'll go to the end here. Do, 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 do. And we're going to get Thomas. We're going to drag him across to there. And then we're going to hit transform. And then we go back to there. Thomas is actually moving. He's sliding across, as you can see. He's now in his new position. So you can am animate every single. I could animate, uh, for example, that car as well if I want to um, well, sort of out of shot but I could wait till I get to if I grab the car anyway I won't complicate it all as you can see you can grab anything in here and as long as you hit the transform button that locates tells the, the program where it is at this start then wherever you move it to or whatever happens tell it again that you've reached the point okay so we'll go pretty well set Hit your render button, render movie settings. It will go into um, the actual content folder of the game you're in and save itself into a uh, saved video folder by default. Hit capture movie, it saves the details that you have logged in. And there's the movie starting to render. And her feet are off the ground. I didn't want to waste too much time being perfect in accuracy. As you can see, it's so easy to use. And any animation that you want to do, everything's suddenly so easy to animate. And there's Thomas moving back to his position as well. So he's been animated. And that's just about the end of our scene. Should finish in a second. Open our capture folder. There's the one we just made. Oh, no, that's the one I made before. Here's the one I just made, sorry. And the length of time of this circle, I put a thousand frames in. If I made it 2,000 or 3,000 or 5,000 frames, suddenly this video would be five times longer. And go a lot slower so you can 
I believe in putting a large amount of frames so that you can then either have a lovely slow shot because you can speed it up and play with it a bit better in your um, video editing. It also allows you to just record and then, if, ooh, that's enough film, you can hit stop when you're ready. And there's our video done. I hope that helps understanding the uh, amazing sequencer um, and in our cinematics. Thank you very much.